as partial fulfilment of a Bachelor of Film at SAE Byron Bay and part of the CIU 211 Cultural Perspectives module, I am doing this 10 minute dialectical inquiry assignment on the subculture of graffiti. I will be mainly looking at the graffiti movement in and around the city of New York in the USA. I am going to look at a couple of opinions of other people on the subject which will be covering both sides of the dividing line of those who support it and those who do not support the movement. I am going to start looking at the definition of graffiti. The definition of graffiti, according to the online dictionary, it is as noun, point one, plural of graffito, point two, used with a plural verb, Markings as initials, slogans or drawings, written, spray painted or sketched on a sidewalk wall of a building or public restroom or the like. As such, these graffiti are evidence of the neighbourhood's decline. Point three, used with a singular verb. Such markings as a whole or as constituting a particular group. Not much graffiti appears around here these days. The History According to Gray, 2015, in the history of graffiti there is ten moments of time that are the most important that define the birthing of the graffiti movement. The most important of all is the man known as Cornbread, whose real name is Darrell McRae. He was given the nickname Cornbread while he served time in a correction centre for juveniles. He is referred to as the father of modern day graffiti. Cornbread had developed a strong liking to a girl named Cynthia Custis after finishing his time at the correctional centre. He was so infatuated with Cynthia that he decided to write Cornbread loved Cynthia in the local area wherever he could in the hopes of winning her over and gaining her affection. After finding that he rather liked writing on walls and buildings, he decided to continue by tagging his name all over Philadelphia. He also included the Jackson 5's jet plane. He then went into a local zoo where he tagged an elephant, which he then was arrested for. That is when the graffiti movement got a move on. A video on YouTube by Mass Appeal 2016 which is titled Cornbread Lives, is about cornbread and in this video Cornbread says, My very first tag on the wall was in the halls of a juvenile institution, Youth Development Centre, 1965. The second on Gray's list of 10 is Taki183, who started tagging Taki183 around New York City and this sparked numerous amounts of youth that decided to follow in his footsteps by tagging their names all over the city of New York. While Tacky was not first in the tagging department of the city, he had gained the biggest reputation. Train Graffiti Annapa found that when it comes to graffiti art history, the subway system in New York is the most mentioned in relation to the eruption of tagging in the latter era of the 60s and 70s. This is believed to be somehow a reflection of a troubled and problematic world. The walls of the freight trains travelling from the inner cities to the suburbs were an inviting canvas for the youth of the day to express themselves. It is said that the railroad workers often scribbled on the trains in the beginning of this movement. Quoting a paragraph from Menopa's article, quote, Train graffiti thus emerged from two locations and from two types of trains, both linked with specific social and cultural settings of the second half of the 20th century, from utilitarian purposes to expressions of discontent or subcultural identities. They form a distinct group in graffiti art, history and the development of graffiti styles, unquote. Graffiti, what is it? Is it art or is it a crime? I did a search on the net for graffiti, is it a crime in New York? I also chose the search option of within the last year, 
and I came up with the result of the Graffiti Report, which is the website for reporting graffiti in New York City. It states that you can report graffiti on a building, the outside of a public school, an outdoor a mailbox, a highway, a non-toll bridge, a toll bridge to New Jersey, a park, a bus stop shelter, the subway or other MTA property. This confirms that graffiti are illegal. I am sure no one needs to really be told that. This goes for the rest of the world as far as I know. Any act of vandalism is a crime and the fact that someone wants to tag or spray what they say is art on property that doesn't belong to them is not right in my opinion. According to Chinda, most people think of graffiti as an illegal and destructive way of displaying one's art by spraying paint on other people's property just because they want to express their creativity on buildings and other structures rather than do it on canvas like a normal artist would do. One thing Alicia Chinda did while in New York was to go on a guided tour of the graffiti throughout Manhattan. What she found out from her tour guide, who was in fact an enthusiastic graffiti artist himself, he displayed a great love for the art of graffiti. He said that it has its own personality and culture. Graffiti isn't just a means of art, it is also a culture within itself. Chan 2017 found that with all the noise that is generated from the debate of whether graffiti is vandalism or art, is that it doesn't matter what your cultural background is or your socio-economic standing is, that young people from a range of diversity have been inspired by the graffiti subculture. From vandalism to commissioned art, Goodyear 2015 found that New York and other cities help the owners of properties cover up tagging with a fresh coat of paint, which is a technique called buffing. The only problem is the fresh walls get tagged again, whereas a wall that has a graffiti mural painted on it would help as a deterrent for would-be taggers. Art from the streets of Williamsburg in New York declares that Williamsburg, New York City, over the last 15 years, the area has transformed into a thriving neighbourhood with creativity and diversity boasting from the heavily trafficked streets. Now also a coveted neighbourhood for street art. There is street art that has been allowed and one important piece in particular is known as the Mona Lisa of Williamsburg. This mural was created in partnership by Media Alliance for young artists and writers with Colossal Media. The piece of art was created of a photograph called The Lost Time. This photograph was taken by a Brooklyn High School senior by the name of Stephen Paul. This Mona Lisa of Williamsburg overlooks Broadway Avenue. This is what I call art, not the messed up, messy looking types of graffiti that taggers produce. I find this graffiti an improvement to the eyesore of the urban and bland landscape of brick and steel spread out over the vast cities. While this presentation only covers a little about the full stories around the graffiti subculture, this assignment doesn't allow me the time to delve any further. I would like to finish by saying that I have to totally agree that anyone who trespasses or defaces someone's property without any form of permission is illegal. A personal experience of mine is that I constructed a new fence at our house in South Australia a few years ago and after a few weeks someone decided to tag it. We were extremely ticked off, reported it to the police and then immediately repainted that area of the fence as if nothing happened. This stopped anyone trying it again as their tag would be covered very quickly, which defeated their purpose. I don't like the tagging style of graffiti, but over time I have grown to really appreciate the art form of graffiti and am glad that graffiti artists are being commissioned and given permission to create their passion in a legal way so that they have the outlet to express themselves. A wall with a nice piece of art looks way better to me than a blank, boring wall. If the tag of the tagged our fence created a colourful piece of art, I would have just left it there.
That is the end of my assignment. Thank you.